folks, Craig here, and today I am going to share with you my NES collection, my uh, Nintendo Entertainment System collection. Uh, the NES is the first console I'm pretty sure I ever played, and uh, I have some fond memories of playing it growing up, borrowing and trading uh, games with friends, renting games. Um, we were not well off growing up, so we didn't have a ton of games, but um, still had some great experiences. Uh, I'm going to share with you my loose cartridges first, and then my boxed games. And uh, the loose cards are in no particular order here. So, uh, first up, we have Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt World Class Track Meet. This is not how these games were originally bundled. The Nintendo just kept adding them on as these games came out. But, uh, of course, the classic platformer, the classic light gun game, and the classic uh, power pad uh, game uh, where you run and jump over hurdles and stuff. And then we have Super Mario Brothers 2, which, of course, was not a Mario game originally in Japan. But uh, still a great game nonetheless. And then Super Mario Bros. 3. Also a terrific game. We have Gumshoe, which is a light gun game. Uh, you play as this detective, this Gumshoe, and you can uh, shoot uh, enemies on the screen. And you shoot Gumshoe himself to make him jump. And you can continuously make him jump uh, in the air and jump over things. It's pretty fun. Metroid. Uh, not a big fan of the original Metroid. Um, I think it's it's very difficult to navigate. There's no map and map, and um, a lot of the areas are very samey. But it did uh, it is the prototype for what became a really terrific series. So there is that. Star Soldier, a shooter. Tiny Toon Adventures. You know, there's <laughs> I enjoy this game. I enjoyed the the cartoon when I was younger. And, um, you know, this game is very simple. There's not much to it, but it's, uh, I still think it's a pleasant game to play. Uh, Castle of Dragon. Um, I believe that this is a conversion of an arcade game, but I could be wrong. I don't think I've actually ever played this, which makes me feel bad because I think someone sent this to me. But I've never, I'm, so, I'm sorry, whoever sent this to me, I've never played it. I believe it was Colton. Uh, Ikari Warriors. You know, when I first played this, I'm like, oh, this is, this is not so bad. This is a nice, you know old school shooter because I didn't play this when I was younger I, I bought this you know maybe a year or two ago and uh, the more I played it the more I really didn't care for it <laughs> Mock Rider classic game Mega Man 3 this is the only physical Mega Man game I own on I don't even know how I got this or why um this is the only physical uh, NES Mega Man game I own. The rest are like in Mega Man Anniversary Collection or whatever. That's where I played them. I didn't really grow up playing much Mega Man. Smash TV, uh, the classic, well, perhaps you could call it a twin stick shooter because I guess it really is, but you know, certainly not on home systems. I think, uh, I've never tried it. I think actually you can plug in two controls with this and then play one player and use the second controller to shoot. I'm not really sure on that. Kind of like how you could, uh, with GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64, not a lot of people know this, but you can plug in two controllers and do dual analog on GoldenEye on the Nintendo 64. Uh, Rygar. Great action game. Uh, and then I have like these Disney afternoon games here by Capcom. I have Tailspin, which is a, a really um, a pleasant little shooter. Um, it's not uh, terribly complicated, but uh, it doesn't need to be, especially you know, because it's marketed towards kids. Darkwing Duck, which is basically a Mega Man clone, but I didn't really care for it. I found it to be, you know, that kind of uh, Nintendo frustrating that a lot of these games can be. And none of the powers in this game are meaningful. I mean, I think that's the biggest drawback is that, um, you know, unlike Mega Man where the powers can be useful, none of none of, none of your power-ups in this game are really all that good. Some of these, have, some of these games just randomly have the dust covers. Um, DuckTales, uh, a great... Classic platformer and, and got an update very recently. Chippendale Rescue Rangers, another really easy, simple game, and I'm glad that you know in some cases like Capcom like understood that, um, especially if you're trying to appeal to kids, because a lot of NES games are just they control shitty, uh, the instructions are obtuse, the game is too hard. Like a lot of these games really aren't, they haven't aged well for being realistic here. But there are a few games where they're fun games to play. But they're not, like, too demanding of a kid that's going to play them. And Chippendale is one of those games. And, and, you know, it's just great to play with a friend. It's a lot of fun. Simultaneous co-op. Clash at Demon Head. And some of you uh, may be 
uh, familiar with the name, it was used as one of the bands in Scott Pilgrim. And uh, this is this is actually a fun game. This is like an action platformer. It's really difficult to play without the manual, or well, I suppose the internet, uh, because there's a map screen, and sometimes the game will require you to go to certain points or or, or certain routes on the map, and you don't know what what a point or a route is named unless you're like next to it. Uh, they're all listed in the in the manual, but not in the game itself. So sometimes you just kind of have to like wander around trying to figure out where you need to go. Uh, but other than that good stuff. Uh, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> it's got the branding, but the game's kind of hard. Uh, Athena. And this art does not match the art in the game whatsoever. It doesn't even match the Japanese art. The Japanese art is very cutesy. We got this weird... I don't even know what to describe some of this stuff. This is very strange. But this was common with games on the NES and uh, in the SNES as well. Uh, where we got these I don't know, very westernized uh, art uh, and, and in Japan and <laughs> probably had like very cutesy anime looking stuff. Uh, punch Out, the original Punch Out, this is Mike Tyson's Punch Out, which has Mike Tyson in it. Micro Machines. Was this, you, you know, I remember playing Micro Machines a lot uh, as a kid. I don't remember it coming in this cartridge though. Was Micro Machines an unlicensed game? It's very strange, but uh, it's a very fun game. I, I like uh, I like Micro Machines quite a lot. Little Nemo, the Dream Master, loosely based on an early 1900s uh, cartoon strip, and uh, I think uh, there's also uh, an anime in Japan. Was it uh, was it just a movie? I'm not sure, but um, a really fun game. Legendary Wings. Uh, this is a shooter that has both uh, vertical scrolling and side scrolling levels. It's good stuff. Tough though. Uh, Golgo 13, top secret episode. I'm pretty sure this is based on like an anime or a manga or something. Uh, play this a lot as a kid, um, and this is not really a kids game. This has very, I mean, this this game is very sophisticated in some ways. I don't know, especially for an NES game. I don't want to oversell its sophistication, but it it's. It's very different from other action games of the era, and you. There's a point in the game, man. When I was a kid, I was pretty sure I knew what was going on, but I didn't quite get it because I was, you know, young. But there's a point in the game where you definitely sleep with a woman to regain your health, and it was not gratuitous or anything like that. Like it was very subtle, and uh, I guess as far as an NES game goes, it's handled pretty well. I mean, you know, games that involve like secret agents, they usually end up sleeping with a bunch of people. And uh, as far as that goes, it's handled uh, pretty well. But uh, uh, yeah, I enjoy the game. Then we have uh, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. And those are all my loose carts. So my box games. I have Adventure Island 2. Uh, I love this game growing up. I love Adventure Island 2. Uh, it's good stuff. The Adventures of Dino Ricky. Uh, this is this is actually a shooter. This is a vertical scrolling shooter, but you play as a caveman, not like a spaceship or anything. And it even has some light platforming elements. You actually can jump. Bad dudes. Classic beat up. Batman. Um, this is this was pristine when I bought it. This is you can see somewhere someone sliced accidentally sliced the box when it was in packing, and like this is fresh. Um, this is, this is a really nice game, actually. I don't think I've ever finished it, but, um, it's a really nice licensed action game. Blaster Master. Blaster Master is something really unique. This is, um, it has a very Metroid-like design. Uh, sort of an open world, uh, and you need different power-ups and abilities to navigate it. Uh, unfortunately, like, something like Metroid or even Zelda, there's no password save, there's no battery backup save. You have lives, and then when you die... Uh, that's it, and it's a very challenging game, and it's not a short one either. So uh, I don't. I'm not even sure. Have I ever? I don't even know if I've ever finished this because of that. So it can get it can get pretty tough, but it's a really really good game. I enjoy that a lot. Contra. Not much to say about that action game. I don't think I've ever finished that either. It's pretty tough. Uh, Deja Vu. Uh, this is probably the first like point and click adventure game I remember ever playing. Uh, this is very much in the vein of Shadowgate, 
and but you're a detective with amnesia and you have to solve uh, this mystery. Uh, I did not originally play this on the NES, did I? I don't remember. Because there was also a Game Boy Color version, but I don't remember which one I played first. But that's fun stuff. Dr. Mario. Mario looks goofy as hell on this cover. I never even noticed that. Excite bike. Um, not not uh, a, a super complicated racer, but you know the fact that you can create your own tracks was pretty cool for the time. In fact, Xanadu, Fasanadu, Fasanadu. Not really one hundred percent sure how to pronounce that, but uh, a pretty cool action adventure role playing kind of game. Some things in common with uh, Zelda Two. Fester's Quest. I always wanted to play this when I was younger. I never did, and uh, so I bought it at a flea market recently. And I and I remember like seeing uh, spots of this in Nintendo Power. And I thought like, oh well, maybe it's a bit like Zelda because that's kind of what it looks like in some cases. And um, no, this isn't that great. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Um, you know, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan. It's my favorite movie of all time. I, I love Ghostbusters. Uh, you know, I had fun playing this game. There's, there's some great concepts in this game. The idea about buying new equipment and going ghost busting and stuff. But, uh, you know, once you hit uh, uh, Dana's building and you have to go up these stairs, I mean, the game is gone. That's done. Nobody wants to go up. You have to use a turbo button or something to get up those stairs. It, it's impossible otherwise. It's terrible. But some neat concepts. Pretty simple stuff, though. Uh, Gradius. Gyrus. This is one of my favorite shooters on the NES. This is like a like a circular shooter. You move in a circle around, kind of like um, what am I thinking of? Tempest, and the enemies come from the center up, and it's got great music. This is um, this is a lot of fun to play. And I'm sure that's on like compilations and stuff on various other systems. Iron Sword, uh, Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors Two. I played this growing up, and I was not very good at it. I'm pretty sure this is a Rare game. I'm pretty sure this was developed by Rareware, published by Acclaim, which no longer exists. But, uh, you know, this has some things in common. I would say, like, maybe, like, Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. Like, collect money and buy things and progress uh, through the map here. Uh, and, but it's this game's tough. And, uh, of course, we have uh, the Dreamboat Fabio here on the cover. Jackal. I, I love Jackal. This is a, a top-down action game, and you can play it two players. You can play it simultaneous co-op. It's a lot of fun. Karnov. Uh, a friend gave this. I had never played this growing up, this side-scrolling uh, platformer action game. I never played this growing up, but my friend gave this to me. Mm, did he give this to me for my birthday? He might have given this to me for no reason. I think he's just like, yo, I got Karnov. And uh, so uh, I played this more recently. Uh, kind of Kind of challenging. Kirby's Adventure, um, the first console Kirby game, and it might be the first one where he was pink, I think, because in the original Kirby's Dream Land on the Game Boy, he was he was white. Um, but this is good stuff, and I think in some ways, I think it's one of the later, yeah, 1993. That's a that's a late <laughs> NES game. I mean, the Super Nintendo was already out. That's just, and that's only a couple years before the Nintendo 64 came out. And this, in some ways, pushed the NES. And you can t you can tell because like there be like there's like graphical glitches and stuff. The game the game just pushed that hardware to the limit. And then of course we have the classics, The Legend of Zelda, and uh, Zelda Two: The Adventure of Link. And I, I, I play video games because of the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, you know, this this really captured my imagination, and uh, I adore it. Zelda 2, eh, maybe less so, but um, really, uh, just a terrific game. Hard to play these days. Some of the secrets are a bit obtuse, but... Rad Racer, unfortunately my copy here does not have the 3D glasses, but... Uh, fun game. Snake, Rattle, and Roll. This was actually, when I bought this, this was shrink-wrapped. This was brand new, but I only paid like $20 for it, I think. So, I just opened it, like whatever. Obviously, if it's only $20 sealed, it's not worth very much. Uh, this is a rare game. This is Rareware, and it's this weird isometric uh, kind of platformer, which makes it kind of tough to play sometimes. It may, it's, it's, it's tough to gauge your jumps. It's easy to die, but you can play a co-op. Uh, Solstice, 
and um, this is this is a really nice. This has got terrific music, and this also has isometric graphics, as you can see here. And it's almost like a puzzle platformer. You have to navigate these rooms and use different potions, and it's it's a it's a tough game. I don't I don't think I ever finished this, but I I played it I played it quite a lot because I did own it as a kid, and. Um, this is uh, this is pretty cool stuff. This is definitely a very unique game for the NES. If you don't if you, you don't own this or you haven't played it, you should uh, give it a shot. Check it out. And then we have Star Tropics and Zoda's Revenge. Star Tropics too. Uh, Star Tropics. I love this box art. There's no character here. There's nothing. This is just it's very. Um, it tries to create a, sort of a, a distinct image in your mind rather than have like a logo or you know a, a character here. I like this a lot. And of course, that kind of goes to hell with this because it does have a logo and it does have a character. It's very distinctive like that. But um, Star Tropics is a bit like Zelda, uh, more actiony, I think. Uh, the first one's a bit tough because I mean, not only is it tough in its own right, it's a very challenging game. Uh, but the, the controls were very stiff and the jumping was very precise and it was very easy to die. And uh, the game tried to trip you up all the time. I mean, it was very easy to die in this game, not due to your own negligence, just because the game is a jerk. Uh, but uh, really, I don't use this word a lot. I don't use the word epic a whole lot to describe a game, but Star Tropics is definitely an epic, and it's and it's fantastic. Uh, Zoda's Revenge is a bit different. Uh, you travel through time in Zoda's Revenge, uh, collecting, I kid you not, Tetris pieces, Tetrads. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, it's much more forgiving. The game in general, the game design in general is much more forgiving. The controls are much more forgiving. Uh, they're not as stiff. The jumping is better. Uh, so in many ways, the game actually, the playability in Star Tropics 2 is a lot better than the first Star Tropics. But as far as um, world building or you know, just the, just the feeling of the game, Star Tropics 2 doesn't quite have it. Uh, Star Tropics 2 definitely has that in spades. But this is the more playable of the two. But this is just the more epic, I guess, of the two. And I hate using that word, but it's true. It's true. And finally, sorry, I'm bumping the camera here. Finally, we have uh, Tetris. And there's not a lot I can say about Tetris other than from Russia with fun. Uh, but I enjoy a good game of Tetris every now and then. Uh, but there you have it, folks. That, that, is, my, that is my NES collection. Uh, as with any of my system collections, there are games I do not own, uh, either because I'm not interested in them or I just haven't gotten around to it. You know, I own a lot of systems, and it's not always easy to get, a, get around to owning everything. Um, but uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching. And until next time, you guys take it easy. And I almost forgot here, I have uh, Digital Devil Story uh, Megami Tensei and Digital Devil Story Megami Tensei 2. These are the very first Mega Ten games that were released. They were, these are Japanese Famicom games. And try to open this up. That's what it looks like in there.